The uh, first session back, what are your initial thoughts on the uh, fitness of the group? I thought our older players running was outstanding. I thought it set a great example to our younger players when they come into the organisation. That's the standard we expect. Uh, the drills are a little different to what they're used to, so they'll take some time, a lot of decision making, but it was a good start. No one got injured, which is even better. Must be a pretty exciting day for you personally. I mean, you've been here for a while, but having the guys all here as a group, and it's essentially the first day on the job. It is, Sarah. I, was, I found myself wanting to set drills up and get cones and hats organised because I've been doing it for so long, but it's nice to have some people to do that, but it's, I'm enjoying it. It was, it was a nice day. Well, well, it would have been great to see the, you know, the old guys set a standard. Is it disappointing in another respect that you know, it was a couple of 29, 30 year olds that you know, set that cracking pace and not the kids? Are, you know, oh, no. No, no. I think what happens uh, with people's bodies is they learn to adapt so much, adapt to so much work as they get older. And uh, it's fantastic for young people to see that what can be done through years and years of hard work. We're not talking about a month or six months. We're talking about people that have been elite AFL players for a long time. So that, that's what I meant with that. Great news about Luke Dalhouse. It is. Yeah. yeah. He's a nice little package. He's one of a high number of young players here that we know we've got to put a lot of development into. We know there's enormous improvement in them, and that's our responsibility to coach them and teach them how we want to play. Can you update us on some of the older guys? Uh, Brian Lake? Brian, all of those fellows, and you got a good look at all how rehab patients today, they're all on track, they're all following programs, and the reason they're following programs is that we believe less can go wrong. Uh, and all of those boys are on track to phase into training at, at the time that the doctors say we can have them back to train. I think you've got uh, three top 50 picks of the draft, including one inside the top 20. Yeah, what will you specifically target, Brendan? Good players. Good players and good people. Of any description, you know? Like, I mean, you know, um, if you, you've got 500 midfielders and you've got a good character as a midfielder, you're going to pick him up because he's a good character? Oh, I think competitive people that are good people and work within a team and want to work for a team can generally fit any system so that's probably where we'll be heading I think. Just on an individual level, I know we mentioned Brian Lake before but I guess a lot of people would see that's sort of one of your big challenges is to get him back up to that all Australian type level. Have you done sort of more work with him than anyone else or you know where do you see he's at? No we haven't invested any more time into anyone than anyone else Ryan. What we've we, we want to be really aware of where all, our, where all of our players sit emotionally and mentally and uh, levels of happiness are important that people actually want to come to work and the only way you know that is if you consistently talk to people and ask them how they're travelling and then you can observe how they train and how they perform. So uh, all players will be in that category and that's why you have a coaching group and you have such a vast array of personalities in the football department to deal with all personality types in the playing group. You've definitely got a reputation as a great teaching coach, but nothing that you do is going to happen overnight. How long, and I suppose you have to be quite patient with sending your message through to these guys? Well, you do to a point, but uh, it needs to be output too, and you need to see people actually training at a at a high level and, and, and joining in the training in all areas, but actually embracing it, enjoying it. And that experience tells me that when players do that, they, they learn the game so much quick, more, more quickly because physically they can handle the game, which helps their mental their mental state. But there's a tolerance level, there'll be a patience level, but there'll be a strong demand on learning what we want pretty quickly too. With their rehab group, I understand they're all on track. If we could individualise with Darren Morris, his injury was particularly at the end of last year. Mm. Where is, is he at in terms of uh, playing next season? Do you expect a start of the season, come back and get season? Oh, back? yeah, very positive, yeah. The, the reports are terrific and uh, each time he's gone back to the surgeon it's only been more positive so what we also know is we have a, a brilliant person who does everything right in all areas so he's on track. And how about Adam Cooney? Same. So, so. He's did on you track. Just to on uh, Adam, is he, is he your best player and can he play every game next year? He's a very good player, we know that. Uh, I can't answer that second one because so many variables come into that but uh, I do know that the more games your smarter, more educated players play, the, the better your team generally looks. But we're no different to probably 13 other clubs. They're all managing really good players through different levels of rehab and different levels of conditioning. And I mean, if your star play. players are available, you're going to be finish higher than hopefully this season. You're going to be a very competitive side. Possibly, but I think the quicker this football club gets its head around 
not relying on star players to get a result, the better we'll be. Do we need star players for us to function as a team? They help, but they're not the be-all and end-all. We need everyone on the list contributing to a team, and that's how we'll coach them.